I'm Dr. Richard Pither. Um, I've spent over 20 years in the Alzheimer's disease area and for the last 10 years working on the Genoscore Act technology. How does the test work? We, we all have 3 billion base pairs of DNA and there are very subtle differences in the sequence that we all inherit. And some of those differences uh, can relate in increased risk of certain types of disease. And the way the test works is by analyzing the variants or the, the changes in the DNA, which have been closely associated with Alzheimer's disease risk. The analysis will tell us how your DNA compares with that of other people in the population. And so it allows us to understand whether you're in a relatively higher or lower risk group. You may have heard about APA retesting, which is also a, a very simple genetic test for Alzheimer's risk. Um, but it really doesn't give you a very comprehensive uh, description of your genetic risk for late onset Alzheimer's disease. APOE is a single gene that comes in several variants, the two, the three, and the four, and you inherit two copies um, of APOE from your parents. So the most common form of the APOE gene that about 60% of us have is the so-called E3 homozygote, where we have two copies of E3. So you may think, that's great. I don't have E4. I'm not at an increased risk. But actually, what we can show is that there is a subset of people of those E3 homozygotes who don't have E4, who are nonetheless in a high genetic risk category. We we think of Genoscore Act as APRO-E+. The advantage of Genoscore Act, then, is that we will take into account your APRO-E status and we'll report it out separately for you so that you and your um, family can be aware of that. But it's only a part, you know, a contributing factor to the overall genetic risk that the Genoscore Act test provides you with. If you'd like to find out more information, you can access our free downloadable PDF, The Science Behind Genoscore Act, here on our website.